Hi, Ben. Um, my name is Tyler, and um, first off, I want to say I'm a big fan of your uh, channel on Patios for, for so, uh Oh, thanks, thanks man. Oh, there. man, I haven't written anything over there. I'm actually in trouble. I need to write an article for Patheos, but thanks a lot, man. <laughs> What's uh, happening? Yeah, get on that. And um, here's my question. Um, so I was on Twitter last night, uh, right after Hana Hichi posted his um, his latest article. And I, I was honestly quite uh, appalled at some of the Sanders supporters that he was retweeting that were, uh, you know, treating him very condescendingly. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask you, um, I, like, I know that's the wrong way to go about, uh, you know, trying to establish a good relationship with the African-American community. Well, yeah, I mean, not so much the African-American community, but so, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, he doesn't represent the African-American community. Um, but I, I see where you're going with it. Let me let you finish your question. Or was uh, that well, the question? Well, well, my question is, is, um, uh, what, it, like, if that's the bad way to go about it, okay. obviously, um, what would you say to your white listeners who are looking for a way to establish that kind of dialogue? Is that something we should just completely um, take our hands off and just let it go completely? Um, because, like, that's kind of what I've tried to do. And yeah, um, I just want to think, know if there's anything at all, maybe, like, indirect or um, maybe a way we can lift some more black voices that we can do, or if we should just for now, just wipe our hands entirely. That's a great question. And you're taking me right into my next segment. So I will address that in its entirety, both ta Tana Hasi Coates and um, some S Bernie supporters that I consider bad supporters and um, the best way for us to address it. So I will definitely take care of that. Thanks so much for the call, man. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, what I'm considering to be some bad Bernie supporters. Um, this, this summer, this summer I did an article, um, not an article. I, mean, I did a video on can Bernie Sanders win over the black vote as well as the Reddit crowd. It was tongue in cheek. Um, but the point of saying that was that there is a, a very, some of Bernie Sanders supporters are and this is i'm not you know okay it was tongue-in-cheek it was against reddit and that crowd but this, you know i'm talking about that group of bernie supporters who um i don't know the best way to describe them other than just their asses they're, they're just complete dicks and they are more interested in winning an argument than they are winning votes and they're more interested in proving a point right they're more interested in trolling uh, all of social media for the purposes of proving that Bernie Sanders is the best candidate. And they don't realize that when you carry yourself like that, then you have turned off everybody, not from you or not just you only, but from Bernie Sanders. And someone has sent me a video uh, from YouTube. It's like a 30 minute long video on telling you how you should speak about Bernie Sanders. And in the video in the first two minutes, it nailed it, right? It nailed it and said that, you know, when you speak about a candidate, you're not just speaking about the candidate. You are now a representative of that candidate. And the way that you carry yourself, the way that you talk, the way that you dress, the way that you treat somebody becomes a reflection on that candidate. And the fact that we live in the social media age means that people have a disproportionate amount of effect, disproportionate effect on would-be voters the louder they are. And so even just today, I ran into like two, you know, uh, this thing with President Obama, right? President Obama, uh, uh, you know, the headline read that President Obama is tipping the scales for Hillary Clinton by these very, you know, bland comments that he gave about, you know, how smart Hillary Clinton was and that Bernie Sanders is like this new shiny thing. And, and, and a lot of people ran with that very angrily. And they began to attack. And when I say a lot of people, a lot of uh, several, not a lot, but several Bernie Sanders supporters ran with this, you know, you know, almost like going after blood with President Obama. How dare President Obama sandbag this conversation? Not realizing that you are not only no, 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 no. Let me start here. Not realizing that in a political world with a seated incumbent, you cannot run against the incumbent and win. 
Politics 101. You do not run against the incumbent. Now, Bernie Sanders knows this. His campaign knows this. People on the lo local level who are running campaigns knows this. But you know who doesn't know this? Some of these, some of these dick Bernie Sanders supporters for which I am describing. And so they've gone on, they go, and this is not, this is not everybody, right? Uh, I sent out a tweet about, you know, let's ignore, let's ignore the headlines. Let's not even take, don't even address what President Obama said. It's in the best interest to just ignore it because you don't run against the seated president, the incumbent. There are enough individuals and even let's say, let's say it's a, a minuscule amount of people. Let's say that across the nation, it's 10,000 people, which I think is a reasonable estimate. 10,000 rabid Bernie Sanders or even Hillary or any supporter on Twitter, on social media can sully the pool of people who are trying to consider who they want to vote for. And, and what we run into is a group of people who are so excited about Bernie Sanders that they that they do things that are damaging to Bernie Sanders. Yes, there are people who are as excited about Hillary Clinton and they do stupid things to 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 hurt Hillary Clinton. But you know, I don't think Martin O'Malley has enough supporters to have that problem. <laughs> but the point is this is that you cannot be more interested in winning a YouTube comment argument then you are winning votes. You cannot be more interested in winning an online a Twitter feud than you are winning votes. You cannot be more interested in proving a point on Facebook than you are winning votes. You are doing more damage to your candidate by running around the internet, patrolling, trolling, whatever you want to call it, trying to prove your point, all the while damaging the brand of your candidate. So this is what Ta-Nehisi Coates, after his last article, which I would call uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates Strikes Back, you know, he began to get some, I, and I did see it, he began to get some vitriolic responses from Bernie Sanders supporters and for which he retweeted. Retweet does not equal endorsement, right? <laughs> Clearly. This is, I'm going to expose your ignorance to my 500,000 followers, so 500,000 people can now see how ignorant you are. But you want to engage and think you're going to win an online debate with Ta-Nehisi Coates, and you can't even win an online debate with a Hillary bot. <clears throat> now, the last caller made the same mistake Appreciate the call. Glad you read my articles, but you made the same mistake that some Bernie Sanders supporters have been making. And it is the mistake that when we say don't engage, we're not saying don't engage because of race. That's not your only problem. Race could be a problem, but that's not your only problem. We're saying don't engage because you don't have the communication skills necessary to not embarrass Bernie Sanders. Right. You don't have the, 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 the communication skills sufficient to convey a thought without devolving into this three year old tantrum. Not the caller, but these people I'm talking about on Twitter, the people who shared, who, who tweeted at uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates and then he he retweeted it. And now everybody sees just how ignorant some Bernie Sanders supporters are. But nobody is see, he's not retweeting how ignorant some of Hillary Clinton supporters are. It's it is a game. It is it is a big game. And the game is. The game is stacked against the outsider versus the establishment. And everything negative that is said by a supporter of Bernie Sanders, a surrogate of Bernie Sanders, or God forbid, Bernie Sanders himself, is going to be amplified through the establishment machine. For which I do believe, I mean, let's be real. You cannot work for organizations that are deeply rooted in our political system and not be a part of the machine. You may not want to be establishment, but Ta-Nehisi Coates is establishment by virtue of the organization that he 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 produced, he um, publishes through, right? So so it's a machine that can magnify the the failings 
and the shortcomings of Bernie Sanders, his surrogates, and his rabbit fans, and his good fans, right? You must be able, one or two things, it's really simple as this. And I don't think I have to even explain it any, any, any deeper. If you cannot convince and talk in a manner that is appealing to the masses, then stand down, <laughs> stand down and just be quiet. I, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not a particular fan of Elon James White, but he says something very, very profound. You don't always have to say something. Sometimes you can't just be quiet. It hurts, but walk away because you're doing more damage than good. Now, there are a lot, there are, there are far, there are far many more good supporters of Bernie Sanders and just politic, political conversation discourse in general, right? I'm not laying this at the feet of Bernie Sanders' fans. I'm laying this at the feet of Bernie Sanders' fans who are screwing this up for everybody. Because the only thing between uh, uh, having a democratic socialist in the White House, having a real progressive in the White House, the only thing standing in the way is about, in my opinion, about one million people who are out there who just are being the worst representatives possible in social media land and in the YouTube comment section. Long story short, y'all go get your friends. Tell them to sit down somewhere. Tell them to chill. Tell them to chill. Now, if, it's, if it is a the entire conversation about Barack Obama that I made my tweet about this morning had absolutely nothing to do about race as much as it had to do with the seated incumbent, the incumbent. You don't run against the incumbent. However, you know, Bernie Sanders, uh, some, of, some of his supporters, you know, I'm part of Phil the Burn. I am a supporter of, of Bernie Sanders. But some of them came at me like, you know, I don't have time for sensitive black people. I'm like, you dumb idiot. One, it had nothing to do about race until you made it about race, you idiot. And then two, you just expose yourself to all of your followers, as well as mine, how ignorant you are. And why would somebody, just think about this, if, if, you, are a, if you are a certified dick and you are the number one fan of Bernie Sanders, why the hell would they want to be a fan of Bernie Sanders? One plus one equals two. It's really common sense. All right. Now to the race component and the conversation about ta Coates. Let's see if I can do this in six minutes so I can go to bed. <clears throat> there is the added layer of race, uh, not necessarily when it comes to President Obama, because you're going to find a lot of African-Americans have a legitimate dissent with President Obama. Put me on them. <laughs> I mean, everybody is not equipped to have these conversations. I'm not. I'm not trying to swing. Um, uh, I'm not trying to swing my hubris. I'm not trying to make myself to be more important than I am. But at the same time, not everybody is capable of having these conversations in a substantive way where we can legitimately push back against these counter narratives. And thank you, false narratives. It contributes. <clears throat> Before I close, it further contributes to this false narrative that Bernie Sanders has a race problem. It is the quintessential straw man in which you create an argument that is not that is arguably not relevant to the current situation that you can easily knock down. And now all of a sudden, Bernie Sanders has a race problem because he does not support reparations. Back to the question at hand. Retweet me, retweet other voices. Sean King, he's definitely got a voice that is is addressing uh, this thing with reparations. Retweet uh, Killer Mike, he's out there pounding the pavement. For the love of God, we need um, uh, Cornell West to start writing. You know, if he would start writing and just stop, you know, not speak so much all the time, but have him write, uh, that would be greatly beneficial. But everyone's not equipped to do these, but you don't have to talk. You could just retweet. You could share somebody else's thoughts. Right. And I think that's the most powerful thing that you could do at this point is is to um, one, get your friends. Get your friends. If your friends are out there trying to prove the point that black people need to find their place, then they are the most detrimental force against Bernie Sanders imaginable. 
Number two, not only get your friends, but amplify the voices of the people who are saying the right things and who know what to say and who are capable of having these conversations. And number three, support the Benjamin Nixon show. Go to patreon.com. You like that, didn't you? Go to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. I have to give a big shout out to... Uh